I will be sharing our Montessori setup at home, our Montessori activities, uh, how I prepare the materials and where I buy them. And for this episode, uh, I will be telling you what is Montessori and its principles. So if you're interested to learn, then keep on watching. to my channel. Today I'm very excited because I will be giving something new to you guys. I will be starting a vlog series entitled Our Montessori Journey where I will be sharing our Montessori setup at home, our Montessori activities, uh, how I prepare the materials and where I buy them. And for this episode, uh, I will be telling you what is Montessori and its principles. But before we start, I'd like you to know that I am no way a Montessori consultant or a teacher. I am a licensed nurse and I am a mom to a one-year-old to toddler. These information that I will be sharing to you are from my own research, uh, from my own readings and what I have learned after attending Montessori webinars. And for this episode, uh, most of the information, um, I took it from this book, uh, The Montessori Toddler by Davis. So, if you want to, to learn more in advance, then you can read this book as well. So, what exactly is Montessori? Montessori is a method of education where uh, we do not feed the child with facts, but we cultivate them uh, to have a desire to learn. Uh, it is discovered by Maria Montessori. She was one of the female doctors in Italy. So the story is like this. Maria Montessori was working in one of the clinics in Rome where she was tending to poor families with their children. And not only that, she was taking good care of um, children with mental and emotional disabilities. One day, she noticed that uh, those children were picking up crumbs, not to eat it, but to stimulate their sense of touch. That was then she figured that those children do not need uh, medicine, instead need nila yung education. But Maria Montessori did not begin with such preconceived methodology. Instead, she used her knowledge from her medical training to understand fully the behavior of the children. And there's such time that she opened her own um, house of children. In the house of children, at first, the kids were so unruly and they don't show interest at all. Until one day, they became interested with puzzles, preparing their own meals, and taking care of the environment. After that, she observed a calmness in behavior and there was also a period of deep concentration. Then she realized that children do learn and absorb from the environment and um, you only need to provide them with the right tools because eventually they will essentially teach themselves. The Montessori method is known siya not only in Italy but it spread all over the world and up until now we are still practicing the Montessori method of teaching. So what is the difference between the traditional and Montessori approach? Um, I'm gonna show you a diagram it is a diagram from the book, The Montessori Toddler by Davis. This is a best illustration to differentiate the traditional and the Montessori approach. So in the traditional approach, it's very simple, guys. Um, it is the teacher who will decide what to learn. And it is also a one-size-fit-for-all type of teaching. So for example, if the teacher wants to, 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 to talk about or to, wants to teach about the alphabet today, then all the children will learn about the alphabet. In a Montessori approach, it's different. It is the child who will be the one to decide what to learn. So there is a dynamic and mutual respect among the teacher, the child, and the environment. The child decides what to learn, the teacher prepares the environment, observe the child, and make necessary adjustments when possible. Uh, and she is also the one who will prepare and lay on the, the shelves all the materials needed from the environment 
for the child from easy yes to hard yes. She will then make adjustments only if necessary and stepping out of the way again for the child to learn and gain more mastery. And then the child will learn from the environment. So yun yun. So my dynamic and my mutual respect among the two. So yun yung difference ng Montessori method of education and traditional method of education. In the Montessori method of teaching, there are 10 principles that we should follow. And these principles are not only applicable in the classroom setup, but it is also applicable at home. The very first principle is prepared environment. So this is a yes space in your home where the child can move freely 100% and confidently. Shelves and prepared activities are just right level for the children to work on. Challenging enough to master but not hard enough that they will feel frustrated. Also included in this principle are the right tools to use to make sure learning is successful like child-sized furniture, trays that they can carry. There is a very common phrase in Montessori approach wherein less is more but materials are complete and not missing anything so the child can work independently. The second principle is the natural desire to learn. Kids are curious by nature and um, their work is play and learning is always possible for them if we, if we let them. But if we keep on saying no to them, that then it will hinder them to learn. So for example, your kid likes to move around, to, to climb, and all those things. If we keep on saying no to them, then it will hinder them to learn. So ano yung right thing na gagawin? You provide them the material and you place them in a, in, in an environment where we can where they can do that uh, in a safe way. So, yan yung role ng nalo. Because for them, it's so irritating if palagi na lang nilang nahihir na, no, no, no sa ganito, no sa ganyan. And it gives them the feeling na parang nadi-discourage na sila to do the things na dapat ginagawa nila. Kasi, um, yung nagsusupervise kept or keep on saying no. So, as much as possible, provide the right material and provide the safe environment for the kids. The third principle in the Montessori education is hands-on concrete learning. It is when we integrate listening and watching while using our hands that we learn best. Mas maganda kung nahahawakan natin or natatry talaga natin, mas, mas madali tayong makalearn, right? So same goes with kids. It's very important that we provide them the right tools the right material so um, para magawa nila ng tama at magawa nila ng mapute while learning. The fourth principle in the Montessori education is a very important principle. Ito yung principle ng um, sensitive period. So it is believed that every child ay may kanya-kanyang sensitive period. Sensitive period is a is when a child shows interest in a certain area. So, for example, ngayon, um, parang gusto-gusto niya yung maglaro sa tubig. That's her sensitive period. So, my sensitive, uh, my sensitive period for language, my sensitive period for movement, ito yung time na gusto-gusto nilang umakyat ng stairs o gusto-gusto nilang magja-jump. Um, mayroon ding sensitive period ng order, yung gusto nila na palaging dapat naka-close yung door, dapat naka-arrange lahat ng mga gamit nila, or dapat naka-inline lahat ng toys nila. So that is their sensitive period. So sa Montessori education, we respect every, every child's sensitive period. And ibang child, iba-iba yung sensitive period nila. Sensitive period niya ngayon is more on sensorial sensorial exploration, yung mga ganun. So, iba-iba sila. That is why, in a Montessori education, um, yung one-size-fit-for-all na teaching is not applicable kasi the Montessori education believes na yung mga children ay may iba-iba na sensitive period. So, and we must respect it. Hindi pwede na 
Isabay sila lahat. Oh, today, uh, today we're going to study about the alphabet. But then, yung isa, hindi niya yung sensitive period. Um, for Montessori kasi, it's easier to learn if the child shows interest into something. So, hindi mo pwede ifo-force sa kanya yung knowledge na hindi siya interested. That is why you have to observe the child and then feed the child with that with the right material or give the child with the right material materials and toys for her to for her or him to learn. Hindi pwedeng mag-aaral tayo ngayon ng alphabet pero yung isa naman hindi niya gusto yung alphabet today. So that will only hinder him. That will only hinder him to learn. So that's it. The fifth principle sa Montessori education is the absorbent mind. So, it is believed that kids from 0 to 6 years old, meron silang sponge-like brain. Naa-absorb nila kung ano yung nasa paligid nila. That is why it is very important to be mindful of your words, of your actions, and of your emotions, especially if you are in front of the kids. The sixth principle sa Montessori education is freedom and limits. It is important na to give freedom, not to spoil them, but um, it's giving freedom within the limit. So how can you give freedom within within limit? So in freedom and limit, you have to give a firm yes and no. So uh, hindi po na nag no ka ngayon, tapos later on for your own convenience, magsisay ka na. Yes na. Kasi, tendency, pag ganun, nalilito sila. By being firm, uh, you should also be consistent. So, you can say no now, and then later on, you will say yes. Example, you can't climb the, the stairs without my supervision. So, it is very clear na um, pwede lang siyang mag-climb sa stairs if nandun ka. But if wala ka, hindi siya pwede mag-climb ng stairs. That's the example of freedom and limits. And, Hindi pwede na sinabi mo ngayon na, oh, you can climb the stairs without me. And then later on, magsasabi ka na naman na, yes, you may climb the stairs. Uh, another example is, uh, you cannot use gadget. And then later on, kasi, kasi na-busy ka, pwede mo na siyang pagamitin ng phone. No, it's not that. So you have to be consistent sa rules mo. Seventh principle is independence and responsibility. So, um... It is very important that we allow the kids to do tasks and to do chores in our house or in the classroom. Not because we want them to grow up fast, but because they love doing it. Um, one very good example sa principal na to is si Kara. Kara loves to help me in doing chores. Uh, for example, gusto gusto niyang siya yung tagabigay. Uh, every morning, pagpupunta na yung daddy niya sa office and when dressing up, siya yung tagabigay. Like for example, nililay ko yun sa, sa bed yung mga gamit ng daddy niya. And um, her daddy will tell her, Oh, Kara, can you please give me the pants? And then Kara will happily give her daddy, uh, her daddy the pants. So, ganun yun. Um, we encourage them to do tasks. Uh, I remember I have read one article na nagko-complain yung mom kasi ayaw tumulong yung mga kids niya sa mga gawain bahay. Na pa tracing ba? Kaya pala ayaw tum uh, parang walang ganang tumulong kasi when those kids were little, ayaw niya na tumutulong sila kasi it's either takot siya na baka mabasag yung pinggan or baka madidelay lang yung trabaho niya. Now, in independence and responsibility, it is very important that we let them. Uh, the results may not be perfect, but the result is not important. They, what is important is the process. So, yung nalilearn nila through the process. Si Kara will let her um, help with the chores. For example, we let her um, set up her dining table. Uh, to put the spoon, the placemat, the fork, yung mga ganun. Uh, sa adult na perspective, parang hindi siya pasado. Pero pag tingnan mo siya sa child na perspective, 
it's something na parang nagbu-boost ng pride nila. So that is why we should allow them because it's the start para maging responsible sila. And you, we have to remember again that the result is not important. What is important is the process. The ninth principle is respect. Um, it is very important that we treat them same way we treat adults. So for example, one of the very important rules in our house is to treat Kara's um, toys and other belongings with respect. So you can even kick, kick your uh, kick Kara's toys pag nakita mo siya on the floor. No, you have to pick it up with your hand and place it kung saan siya dapat ilagay. Hindi siya pwedeng basta na lang ihagis mo dun, especially if Kara is there. So it's one way of showing respect sa mga belongings ni Kara. Another thing also is sa so winning table niya or activity table niya. Meron siyang activity table na ginawa ng lolo niya. Um, that is Kara's belonging. So, so one way na we show respect sa kanya is by asking permission before kami gagamit dun sa table at chairs niya. Ever we want to sit there, so we should ask for uh, we ask for we ask permission first. Like, not only that, I can still remember when Kara was still a newborn. Um, before I change her diaper, I always make sure I ask permission first before I'm gonna take off her diaper. So, palagi ko talagang sinasabi na, Baby, can I change? Ah, uh, uh, mommy's going to change your diaper. Even if hindi siya nagre-reply, at least, nasasabi ko sa kanya. So, so, she'll get used to it. At para makikita na niya talaga at mapipil niya talaga na nare-respeto siya. The 10th principle in the Montessori approach is observation. This is a very important um, principle. Uh, dito na, dito nagbe-base yung very common phrase na ginagamit ng mga Montessori mom and Montessori teachers na follow the child. Kasi you have to observe kung ano yung interest ng child, kung ano yung obsession niya at the moment, at kung ano yung gusto niya talagang minamaster. So, for example, you notice na your child keeps on going up and down the stairs. So, yun yung sensitive period niya at the moment. So, ano yung right na material and right na activity na ipro-provide mo sa kanya to mold or, or to, to, to gain mastery going up and down the stairs. So, for the Montessori, uh, for the Montessori education, it is when the, you let the child go up and down the stairs with with limits, of course, and, or if not, you provide them the right material. So, for example, the pickler triangle, right? If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to learn more about Montessori, then make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell icon beside the subscribe button so you won't miss our next video, which is about...